to unpause it. So we are recording this. Um, please feel free if you feel comfortable to broadcast your video um, and unmute your microphone um, to ask questions. But you can also ask questions in, in the chat if you feel more comfortable with that. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Clint for a few minutes and then we'll go ahead and get started. All righty. Thanks for having me. Welcome, everybody. So I am Clint Ballinger. I am the director of the undergraduate program at the Lally uh, School of Management here at RPI. So uh, at RPI, we're pretty fortunate. You know, we're uh, mostly seen as a technology university, engineering, science, stuff like that. But we have a full out business school. Woo so um, <clears throat> that's kind of a kind of a rarity with an all engineering school. Um, it actually is fantastic for anybody that's interested in business because uh, it's a real differentiator over other business schools. So, um, and I'll talk more about that while, when, I, uh, when I do my thing. So, uh, but anyway, my background, I got a PhD in nuclear engineering of all things. Um, used it for a few years, got out into the work world and I was like, I don't wanna work in a cubicle the rest of my life. What am I gonna do? So I started my own business. Wish I had taken some business classes when I was in college and I didn't because I made a lot of mistakes. Um, Anyway, I was actually, I was a transfer student also. So I went to a community college first, <clears throat> transferred to an undergrad, then transferred and then went to grad school. So I was uh, in a similar boat uh, from, from you transfer folks as well. So um, when I'm given my, my presentation portion, um, feel free to interrupt anytime. Uh, um, we'll make this as interactive as you guys want to be, okay? Anyway, that's me. Welcome. Happy to be here. All right. Thank you. Yes, we do want this to be as interactive as possible. So please feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions throughout the presentation, um, as well as um, writing into the chat box. We'll be monitoring that throughout the presentation and we'll certainly have time for questions at the end. So please, as we're going through, um, if you do have questions um, to let us know. A little background on Rensselaer. Uh, Rensselaer is a medium-sized research university that's really dedicated towards the undergraduate experience and education. Our undergraduate student enrollment is around 6,200 students in the undergraduate population. There's around uh, 1,300 students in the graduate population. We're located in Troy, New York, and we really pull students from all over the country and all over the world. So we currently have students attending from all 50 states. At the undergraduate level, 19 different countries, but when you pull in graduate students, it brings that number up to 60 different countries. So we really do have students from all over the country and all over the world. Um, there are a lot of opportunities for students to participate in co-curricular activities. So co-ops, internships, research, athletics, um, different clubs and student organizations, there's really a lot to get involved in um, outside of the classroom to supplement your education. We'll be going through that and definitely be going into a lot more depth as we go through today. Rensselaer was founded in 1824 by Stephen Van Rensselaer. It was founded really for the purpose of instructing persons in the application of science to the common purposes of life. So Rensselaer was um, the first school to really do lab-based learning, um, the first uh, school to give a degree, in, uh, a degree in engineering in the English speaking world. So we really have a long history of that hands-on learning education. As I mentioned earlier, we're located in the city of Troy, which is really right in the heart of the capital region. This whole area offers both the relaxed lifestyle, but also easy access to those high energy metropolitan cities of the Northeast. So we're within about three hours of New York City, Boston, a little bit over from Montreal, but we're also within one hour of three major mountain ranges. So we have the Adirondacks, the Catskills, the Berkshire Mountains of Massachusetts. We're also not too far from the Green Mountains of Vermont. So any type of outdoor activity, skiing, snowboarding, hiking, backpacking, sailing, whitewater rafting, rock climbing, you definitely have the opportunity to do that in this upstate New York area. We do have a lot of different clubs and student organizations, over 210 on campus. So student life is mostly centered on campus, but there's a lot to do in the city of Troy and the capital region in general. It's a very young college friendly population with 18 different colleges and universities in this upstate New York area, our capital district area specifically. Um, Downtown Troy itself has a lot of shops and restaurants, places to go out and eat. So students really enjoy going into the downtown Troy area. They enjoy going to the farmer's market, um, which is every Saturday morning year round. 
um, you know, checking out some of the local vendors, grabbing breakfast, lunch, you know, listening to the music. Throughout the year, Troy puts on a number of different events. The last Friday of every month is Troy Night Out, where businesses stay open later and do special discounts to students and community members. Um, Throughout the year, they'll put on the Rockin' on the River music concert series in the summer. They have a uh, Troy Pig Roast, a Victorian stroll around the holiday, uh, Chowder Fest. So there's always a lot going on uh, in the downtown Troy area, stuff where you can go out and, um, you know, ch check out, hang out with your friends, do something outside of uh, the school community. Looking back over time, Rensselaer alums have quite literally built America. Um, from Amos Eaton, who is a co-founder of Rensselaer, was also a surveyor for the Erie Canal. George Ferris, who invented the Ferris wheel, is a graduate of Rensselaer. J.E. Johnson, the co-founder of Texas Instruments, is a graduate of Rensselaer. Uh, the builders of the Brooklyn Bridge and designer of the Tappan Zee Bridge, so gaining access in and out of New York City. Um, Lois Graham and Mary Ellen Rathbun were the first two women to graduate from Rensselaer in 1946. And since they have graduated, um, Many amazing women have followed in their footsteps, from Claire Frazier, who's a pioneering genome explorer, to Carly Strife, who's the co-founder of the Bark Box. Really, Rensselaer alums have had an amazing impact on our world and our society around us. At Rensselaer, there are five different schools or academic programs of study. So we have the School of Architecture, the School of Science, the Lally School of Management, which is the business school, the School of Engineering, and the School of Humanities, Arts, and Social Science. And Rensselaer is very interdisciplinary in the fact that there are low walls and boundaries between the different schools and the different departments. So it's popular for students to take classes outside of their particular major of study, dual major, major and minor within the different schools and the different disciplines. Um, we have the co-terminal program where you can get your bachelor's and master's in five years. This can be done interdisciplinary as well. And like Clint was saying, that's one of the benefits of our business program is that you are at a kind of technological university with so many other great majors on campus. So I'm going to turn it over to Clint to talk a little bit more about the business management uh, program, business analytics program, kind of Lally School in general, and then we'll be able to take questions later, but feel free to jump in as we as we go along. Awesome, thank you. And yeah, talk about inter interdisciplinary. I teach a class called Introduction to Management. I have, I think, 45 students in the class. I'm pretty sure I have every major across campus. So again, pretty cool. Like if you're a, a, a business student taking business classes and you're in classes with uh, mechanical engineers and math majors, economics majors and computer scientists and things like that, that's bound to help you in your future. You know, you'll be friends with these people, join them on LinkedIn, et cetera. Um, just a great place to... Uh, to interact with other other walks of life, things like that. So it's not just the run of the run of the mill uh, business school. So, uh, sort of getting into it, we have two undergrad degree programs: uh, BS in business and management. This is our most established degree program, uh, where you can have some uh, some concentrations in accounting, business analytics, entrepreneurship, finance. You can see the list there. So uh, we offer uh, like you could get concentrations in, in those different topics as you as you're getting your BS degree. The other is a pretty new degree called business analytics. So it's a it's a bachelor's degree in business analytics. This was really driven by industry. <clears throat> um, being at a technology university, uh, industry would come to us and say, "Boy, do you have some some real tech savvy business folks that can understand analytics and the math behind it?" So we put a degree program in place. So uh, we're very highly ranked in business analytics, even though it's a fresh new program for us. Um, so pretty cool stuff. And we prepare all of our all of our uh, uh, students to tackle today's business uh, 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 challenges and things like that. We really prepare you for uh, you know the modern world. This is we update our curriculum all the time, up, always updating software, things like that. The, the uh, professors are fantastic, etc. And we're uh, we're even accredited. How about that? All right, next slide. Um, one of the things I like to point out to students is we've been here for 200 years, you know? So as a 200 year old institution, almost, I think our anniversary is coming up in three years. Um, a lot of people have walked through these doors uh, before you. Uh, a lot of people have done great and fantastic things. 
and you're part of that. Once you get your your degree at Rensselaer, you're in the club, man. Like you're you're in with these other alums that have gone before you, 200 years worth of them. So once you have that pedigree, once you have that that sort of uh, that, that title, that degree in hand, uh, that'll lead you a lot of places. It opens a lot of doors for you because you'll see other people and other other uh, companies and things like that, and they will greet you with with open arms usually. All right, next slide. So employers know that RPI business degree is different from the rest. Um, Seventy-one thousand dollars for the average starting salary for our for our folks. I think I have a slide later that talks about how that's like I think thirty-six percent higher than than most business schools. So uh, employers seek our business students out because they know they're different. They know that they, uh, they you know have have much more of a technology bent than than a, more of a traditional business school. Uh, next slide. And, you know, you guys are modern folks. The world's driven by technology and data. That's what we do. I mean, we're, we're, all of our programs are geared towards the latest technologies, um, data analytics, um, uh, all kinds of uh, com computer software, math, things like this. So this is, this is modern business, man. This is, this is, uh, this is where, where we, you can get prepared to tackle all the uh, issues that are facing business today. So not, not the typical traditional business school. All right, next slide. And like I said, we have a, a modern curriculum. We look at it all the time. I'm part of the curriculum committee for the uh, for the school, and we're refreshing that all the time. We're actually talking about a couple of different uh, minors and concentrations and things uh, that might, we might want to offer, all based on either needs from students uh, they've expressed a need or need from industry. Um, usually, it's driven by industry because we want you guys to go out once you once you leave RPI. I mean to get a job, you're probably not going to school just to, just to get an education. You're probably going to school because you want to get a better job than what you could without the education. So we're here to help. That's what, uh, that's what we're all about. So train you, get you all up to speed for the new modern digital economy. All right, next slide. Um, as we were saying before, we have a very... <laughs> Uh, a, a, a cross section of the world. You'll be going to school with with people from all over the place, which is also really cool, um, because you get different different perspectives, different cultures. It's a real place for you, for you to grow as a person. And uh, all of our students are they're they're pretty engaged in what's going on around around them. And they there's sort of a, a feeling on campus that what what you're doing is actually going to have an impact on society. That's one of the one of the things I really like about the school is there's a sort of a yeah, uh, to say it's a higher moral purpose is probably an overstatement, but there's a feeling that the stuff that we're doing is important and the stuff that we're doing is, is going to make a difference in, in the world. So that's, uh, that's nice to be, be in that sort of environment. So that's what, that's what we have here. We do a lot of hands-on experiential uh, learning in the business school. I think I talk about it in a little bit, getting projects from uh, outside corporations and things like that. All right, next slide. And early on, you're treated in a way that, that's going to make you become a really good professional business person, to have really good business acumen, uh, to understand what it takes to excel in business um, and life in general. Uh, we, we weave that into our classes. So even as freshmen, freshman level classes, we, uh, we have... We have several classes where you have to present to an executive board, like some out, outside executives that come in and they listen to your presentation. Nerve wracking, sure, but it's also a very good opportunity for you to network, practice your skills before you leave the, the, the halls of RPI and you get, to, uh, you get to really hone your hone your craft. We do marketing projects with real companies from the outside world. We do the Arch Away uh, semester, which is a fantastic opportunity for you to get a real, real world experience um, with a with a job before you actually get out to the to workforce and see what you like and what you don't like. Um, tangentially, I I got a job my our internship when I was a junior in college as a nuclear engineer, and uh, it turns out I decided I don't like what nuclear engineers do. <laughs> So I, with a BS degree, so I ended up changing my decision. And I, I was like, okay, I got to go get a PhD in nuclear engineering because I kind of like what they do. So anyway, these sort of experiential things like that, um, the internship type op uh, opportunities, 
fantastic because you get to really figure out what you want to do in life, um, which is never an easy decision. Um, and it's never terminal, by the way. You could always change your decision. Capstone experiences as a senior. Uh, I teach classes on that where we, we bring a lot of projects in from the outside world and have students work on them. We even do field trips over to companies and get inter interact with their teams and all kinds of good stuff. So uh, next slide. Uh, none of our classes are taught by, by TAs. All of our classes are taught by, by real professors. So people with PhDs in uh, one, of, one particular industry. So uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. And that's a real difference. You're not gonna, you're not gonna see some, uh, some teaching assistant getting up in, in front of the class. Uh, our classes, we try to keep them small and that gives us a real uh, sort of more like one-on-one -on -one attention to the students. We get to know our students. Actually the undergrads, uh, my department, we do all the advising for undergrads. And we have, there's, there's three of us, and for three, four years or however long you're, you're at, at RPI, getting your BS degree, we watch you the whole time. We, we are your advisor group. So there's three of us that do that the whole time, so we really get to know you. Um, little fun fact I just dug up the other day is that greater than 50% of our, uh, of our faculty have uh, engineering and science degrees. Again, kind of a weird thing. It's a differentiator for us. So we have uh, we have a very technical, technically savvy group of professors teaching pretty technically savvy uh, students too, because that's kind of who we attract, and that's who employers look for as well. All right, next slide. We get lots of press. Um, our professors all publish papers. So uh, they're called in as as experts on different things. So you, you'll see. You'll see Rensselaer uh, uh, Business School folks published in all kinds of places. And in fact, little known fact about yours truly here, I was written up in Martha Stewart's Living Magazine in August. How cool is that? I don't know. I don't know actually how I got that gig, but <laughs> I was quoted in Martha Stewart's Magazine. Pretty neat. All right, next slide. Um, so yeah, most of the business schools kind of go easy on math, technology, data, computer science, programming, that type of thing. But man, if you do that, you're not really going to be set up for today's business world because that's what it's all about nowadays. So you're going to excel if you get into our program. It's not going to be the easiest program, that's for sure, but it's going to be a great program and you're going to be real differentiated from the others that are out there. And did you know that only 5% of business schools are accredited? I didn't even know that until about two months ago. And I was just like, I, so you see business schools advertised all over the place. Only 5% are accredited. It's pretty important. So anyway, little known fact. Next slide. So we do a lot of uh, core science, math, tech, uh, humanities uh, core classes that we, uh, that we you know, prescribe on your path for you, social science and other things like that, in addition to the business subjects that you're going to be uh, learning leadership skills, management skills, time management skills, project management, all kinds of things uh, are woven into our curriculum. So it's a really, it's a broad uh, swath of knowledge that you'll, that you'll get. It really sets you up to be, to be a, a, a leader uh, and, and manager of people uh, and projects. So most likely you guys are all gonna work for a few decades well, after a while, I can guarantee you get a degree from RPI, you're going to become a manager. You're going to, you're going to be managing people and projects. So these type of classes will set you up for that immediately. You might not be a manager when you get your first job, but you will be a manager at some point. All right, next. Um, very interdisciplinary. Uh, we, we get through our doors at the business school, we get every, every walk of life um, from all across the campus. So we're kind of a, a real good resource for people. So you'll be interacting with all those folks as well. And, and you'll be interacting with them on the other, other side because we make you get out of the business school and go up the hill and take other classes, math classes, econ classes, all kinds of different things like that. So you'll be uh, cross-pollinating with a lot of different people. Uh, Lally courses, AI, machine learning, um, data applications, processing, all kinds of stuff um, is, is sort of the sort of our, our bread and butter, especially if you get into the business analytics degree. All right, next. 
So data analytics, business analytics, this is, uh, this is a hot new area, like I said, uh, new degree program based on industry needs. So we had more, more uh, employers coming to us and saying, wow, can you uh, get me a batch of students that really know this data analytics stuff? We said, yes, we will. We'll develop a whole degree program. Pretty good, so it's working. Um, and it's more than just looking at Excel spreadsheet. Oh, it, you know, you can look at numbers and kind of look at trends and things like that. But unless you got the business smarts, you don't know what the heck that means. So we train students on both ways. So it's not just boring number stuff. Uh, it's actually doing the analytics, doing the math, things like that, but also applying some business sense to say, wait a minute, there's a trend here. I understand the cause and effect of these things. That's what our students learn. That's a highly sought after degree. All right, next. We have other things. We have minors and, and dual majors. There's a, when I was a kid, they didn't have such a thing as a dual major. Dual majors, you get, you get like, it's not two degrees, but it's a double major on your diploma. So uh, popular dual majors are math. So you can get a business degree and a math degree on your diploma. So two, two, different, uh, two different majors. Economics, computer science, uh, uh, ITWS, we call it, Internet Technology and Web Science, Design and Innovation Society, all these kind of things are available. Not, not only available, these are, these are common ones, popular ones. We have more than this, too. You get a minor, too, strategic communication, economics, computer science, psychology, et cetera. So if you wanted to dabble in some other subject, go off and get a minor in it. We'll help you do that. My, my department and in your in undergrad program will help you figure out what courses you need in order to fulfill all that stuff while you're here uh, getting your, your bachelor's degree. All right, next slide. Um, our students go off and do great and wondrous things also. So it's not just... Uh, not just the people that were here 200 years ago, it's, it's the people that graduate today. So people going to Salesforce, Xbox, Deloitte, Facebook, Wayfair, Axis, Consulting, um, lots of different places doing lots of different cool things. I've heard, I've heard like it, it's pretty neat to get to know the students and then watch them sort of fly and go off and, and do their own thing. Um, never a dull moment around here. So it's pretty, it's pretty neat to see what they end up doing. Um, and with your degree, it stays with you forever. This is another thing I like to tell people. Once you have it, suppose you're, you're like Brian, you get a job at Xbox and you're like, yeah, after a few years, it doesn't, it's not working for you anymore. You want to do something else. Fantastic. Go off and do something completely different. You still have your RPI pedigree. There's doors that will be open for you doing that. So you can use, you know, just keep building your resume, bobbing, weaving, things like that. That's you know what I did. I saw that I, there was no future for me at my at my job working for a big company as a nuclear engineer. I decided to start my own company. We teach you that too. Teach you classes on that. Teach a class on that tomorrow. How about that? Um, all right. Next slide. Uh, our folks go everywhere. I mean, they, we have a lot of them that go into consulting. A lot of them go down to Wall Street um, doing analytics and, and just uh, investment type things, finance, uh, Tesla, SpaceX, Johnson & Johnson, Deloitte & Touche, uh, all kinds of different places uh, our, our folks go, Xbox, Facebook, et cetera. Um, Uber, I think we've had a couple people go there. So anyway, Everything's fair game. The cool thing about RPI is it attracts all these companies. Some of them are non-traditional business companies, but they'll come to the business school and, and recruit from us from, from there as well. So while they're on campus. So again, pretty nifty opportunity for you to be uh, to join up here with the, the business school at a technology university. Next. Starting salaries, pretty good. Over 70K, uh, average starting salaries. Uh, other business majors from around the country, the US average is about 52. So RPI grads make 36% more. Pretty good. I don't know about you guys. I'm not trying to be greedy, but I like money. I like making more money. More money is always good, you know? So 36% more sounds like a good thing, which it is. So, but it's hard too, you know, this isn't the easiest degree program and employers know it. And that's why they pay you the big bucks. So it's pretty, uh, like I said, pretty good program once you're in. The other thing, once you're in, you guys have already been uh, admitted or accepted. We don't mean to fail people out. We don't, we try not to do that. We want to keep you in the program. So we have a pretty high success rate of students uh, staying in the program. So uh, just, just know it's going to be hard, but you can do it. All right, next slide. 
We have some uh, centers, like some centers of excellence. These are oftentimes uh, grant funded centers and things like that. And we do different things. So Severino Center for Technology Entrepreneurship, uh, Center for Financial Studies, uh, Center for Supply, Supply Networks and, and uh, Analysis. I know the most about the Severino Center because I'm an entrepreneur. I teach entrepreneurial classes and things. So I work a lot with the Severino Center all kinds of programs that we go through there. Meaning, programs meaning sort of after school things, not associated with you getting a degree, but associated with you just bettering yourself as a person, in this case, an entrepreneur. I want to say last year, we gave out $200,000 worth of prizes, prize money. So again, looks good on your resume. You, you won a prize for the, the change the world challenge that we have every year at this time. Fantastic, man. That looks great on your resume. Plus you pocket 5,000 bucks. Pretty neat. All right, next slide. We have clubs too. We have uh, Lally Management Student Association, a really active club and women in business as well. So both these clubs, very active, very popular with, uh, with students. They have, uh, if you're interested in learning more, reach out to them. They have Instagram, Facebook. There's the links right there. Um, I think they've, they've done even a couple of uh, Instagram takeovers uh, for the admissions uh, this, this semester as well. So uh, really active. You could get involved with these clubs and that's always a good thing as well. Right. Yeah, we had uh, women in business just a few weeks ago, and I think their takeover is saved um, on our Instagram account. So oh, if you want to follow us on Instagram, I, I'll make a pitch for that later. But, uh, you know, uh, you can go check it out. Uh, they shared a lot of great resources. They did a great takeover. So perfect. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Um, as part of the arts program, and you guys will learn more about that in a second, I think. Uh, but that's where you, you spend a semester away doing something like an internship. So we've had internships, uh, you know, from uh, FTI Consulting, A&E, uh, you know, Arts and Entertainment Networks, NASA. You know, that, that kid went to NASA and he did some data analytics for them about the South Pole wind conditions and stuff like that. So anyway, crazy things, opportunities that that'll kind of blow your mind um, come come through the door all the time. Uh, and again, you get to tackle these things with your with your newfound business knowledge and all that. So it's a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good thing. Lots of, lots of good opportunities for uh, getting internships and we'll help you with that as well. All right, next. I don't know if you guys have been on campus and unfortunately we're still kind of COVID stricken uh, as you know, as the rest of the world is, but that's opening up. That'll, that'll open up uh, in the next few months as we get, as we get out of this. Um, and then you'll notice we have a beautiful campus. I really like the RPI campus, especially in the fall. I just, it's great. Old trees, old buildings, you know, a uh, little crispness in the air. It's like, ah, it's nice, you know. So uh, I, I hope you guys have a chance to visit. Uh, I know we have virtual visits and things like that that you can enjoy as well. Uh, but really cool old, you know, it's what you think of when you think of a, an East Coast college. That's what I think. So I love it. Um, I think it's cool. All right, next slide. And one of my invitations for you guys is to do this, all right? Picture yourself being at RPI. You know, you're already, you're already in. They've, they've already said you could come. Now picture yourself being here in the fall. When you arrive on campus, the first cool fall evening, I want you to walk down to the Lally building, you know, the, or the, the Pittsburgh building, the Lally School of Management. It's right on the hill. And as you look over the hill to watch the sunset, you'll see the Hudson River. You'll see where the Industrial Revolution started in downtown Troy. So we were, Troy was like the heart of the Industrial Revolution in the United States. Old buildings are still there. It's really cool. You see the Hudson River where Henry Hudson took his boat. He was exploring, trying to find the Northwest Passage. He cruised up the Hudson River. Turns out it's, there's a waterfall uh, right, right across the river from us and he, he couldn't get beyond it. So he stopped right there and kind of turned around. Didn't discover the Northwest Passage, but he discovered New York, woohoo! Uh, and he became nice and famous. He even has a river named after him. So you get to see a lot of history Super cool to see the sunset over the Hudson River in this huge valley and know that you're part of something that's a 200 year institution. Fantastic. Next slide. So on that cool crisp night, you're walking back to your, your residence and you hear the buzz of academic stuff happening, you know, 
actually the the Pittsburgh building is next door to the music building. And every time I leave, like it, it, at night, especially in the fall, I hear I hear people in there playing the violin. And it's just like, wow, that's really cool. I don't know why. Anyway, when you do that, you're walking back. You're thinking, this place is 200 years old, man. What am I going to do? Like, what's, what's going to be my legacy? Because there's been some people here that have done some fantastic things. So what's my life all about? What's my, what's my life going to be? So Walt Whitman, one of my favorite uh, quotes here, is that, that you are here, that life exists, an identity, that the powerful play goes on and you might contribute a verse. So what is your verse going to be? That's what, you know. When you're an academic, you think this way, right? So what's your verse going to be? You can't go wrong with an RPI education. It's, I mean, it'll serve you guys so well in the future. You're going to go do great, wondrous things. So you don't even have to know what your verse is going to be. You just know with that background, it's a solid foundation. Guaranteed, you're going to do some great, wondrous things. So your history is happening here. Next slide. There we go. That's all I had. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I um I just want to touch uh, quickly on the Arch program. Um, and Clint, feel free to jump in um, as well. You probably have some more uh, background as to what um, you know Lally students are doing. But I just like to touch a little bit on you know, the unique aspect of Rensselaer's education um, and it, how it may look a little different for transfer students. So the ARCH program is a unique way for us to integrate um, co-ops, internships, research into your education. So um, uh, when you get to Rensselaer, transfer students are coming in at a number of different levels. We have transfer students coming in as second semester freshmen, right? So you may go to one another college for one semester, two semesters, decide it's not the right fit and then transfer into Rensselaer. Um, other students may be going to another school for two years, getting an associate's degree and coming. So that's really the beauty of transfer students is you're all coming from your own unique background and, and different experience. The way Rensselaer's curriculum is set up is that traditional freshmen spend their fall and spring on a semester on campus. Same thing sophomore year, but after your sophomore year, you spend the summer on campus, taking a full semester's worth of work. After that summer in your junior year, you do an away semester. So either the fall or the spring semester of what's traditionally your junior year is spent off campus doing some sort of off campus hands on experiential learning. This could be an internship, this could be a co op, it doesn't necessarily have to be. If you wanted to do some sort of community service or pursue an entrepreneurial pursuit or um, you know, do some sort of travel abroad experience, you have the opportunity to do what you want to do during that away um, semester. So the way this impacts transfer students is it all depends on how many credits you come in with. If you're coming in to Rensselaer as a freshman, maybe you spent one or two semesters at another school, you're transferring into Rensselaer, you're going to be required to participate in the ARCH with your cohort of students. Same thing if you come in as a first semester sophomore uh, or even second semester sophomore, depending on if you come in the fall or the spring. Um, if it makes sense for you to participate in the arch, we really want you to because we really want you to get that um, experience on campus over the summer where it's just you and your cohort of students on campus, making sure that you're getting that really close connection with faculty members, getting that on-campus experience, and then we want you to get that away experience as well during your junior year, that, that hands-on experiential learning. If you're coming in with two full years, they transfer in uh, really well, and it's only going to take you two more years to graduate from Rensselaer, you're likely not going to be able to participate in the ARCH because you're likely going to be starting um, in the fall. You don't necessarily have, um, you know, the application process. Some of you uh, may be accepted right now, but some of you may still be in the process of applying because we have a rolling uh, transfer uh, acceptance process. So, you know, it really depends on uh, when you're coming into Rensselaer of whether or not you're going to be required to participate in the ARCH. 
Um, Clint, do you, do you want to mention, I know you kind of talked a little bit about it, but any specific stuff that um, is unique to the Lally School of Management for the Arch? Um, do you so, do something specific over the summer or any specific away experiences? I know you mentioned a lot about co-ops and internships and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, so we our, our folks have had pretty good success getting uh, good good co-ops and internships uh, for the for the summer educational uh, piece, we always teach uh, three classes plus an extra elective as well. So we got it pretty pretty well stocked with uh, with the required classes that you need in the summertime. And we have you know really good teachers teaching teaching those classes in the summer. Um, and non COVID days, we also used to do uh, quite a few field trips and things in the summertime. So we would take take uh, students to Boston or, or New York City and go go to some corporate event or you know uh, I've taken kids to trade shows and stuff like that to get them exposed to what uh, what what kind of real business life is all about. So pretty uh, pretty robust program that we have. Yeah, the students who um, are uh, student ambassadors in our office have always talked about the great networking opportunities that they get during the Summer Arch program. Just, you know, having that opportunity to connect with uh, businesses, to get that experience. The field trips, I think, are, have been very valuable to them. All right, so now we're gonna go on and talk about the uh, application and admissions process. So right now we're kind of in the middle of the application review process for transfer students. So it comes a little bit later than incoming freshmen. Um, so we are right now going through reviewing applications, sending out acceptances. So some of you may definitely have already received your um, acceptance into Rensselaer. Some of you may have um, submitted your application and are waiting for a decision. Um, and some of you may have not yet applied. Um, and that's perfectly fine. If you're applying for the fall semester for transfer students, the deadline isn't until June 1st. If you apply before June first, we're going to start reviewing your application um, earlier than June 1st. So we're not going to wait until June 1st to review your application. As soon as your application is complete, we're going to provide you uh, with a decision. You can apply through the common application or the coalition application. We don't have a preference which one you use, so whichever is easier for you to complete is just as easy for us to review. When you apply to Rensselaer, we're looking for your application. Uh, your college transcripts. So regardless of, um, you know, how many colleges that you have studied at, we're going to need the official transcript from each of those schools. So even if you studied at one school, transferred to another school, um, had some of those credits transferred, we're going to need the original transcript from um, each school that you attended um, because we're going to look and do a credit evaluation for each of those uh, classes um, to make to see how those classes transfer into Rensselaer. Um, and we're going to need a letter of recommendation. If you have less than four full semesters of college work, we're also going to need your high school information. So we're going to need your high school transcript. For this um, school year, so students applying to the fall 2021 and spring 2022 semesters, we are test optional. So we will not need your SAT or ACT scores. Um, but if you have less than two full years of college work, so that's usually around 64 credit hours. If you have less than that, we will also need your high school transcript sent to us. Um, once you apply to Rensselaer, we will uh, review your application, provide you with a, a decision within about two to three weeks of when your application becomes complete. Once you receive your decision notification and are admitted into Rensselaer, we will start processing a credit evaluation for you. So what we need is we need your, your uh, course description for the classes uh, that you took. So you can just go to the course catalog for the classes that you took copy and paste uh, those course descriptions into a Word document and send them to us. Um, in general, um, a class that's equivalent to a course that's offered at Rensselaer, where a student receives a C minus or better, you're going to get academic credit for those classes. Um, they are all reviewed by the faculty members, so each school will review the uh, course descriptions to see if they're equivalent to a course that's offered at Rensselaer. Sometimes we do need more than uh, just the course description. Oftentimes for some general classes, the course description is enough, but sometimes we may come back to you and say, hey, we need your full syllabus. We need to see really what's covered in this class to see if it covers the same material as a course that's offered at Rensselaer. You can see all of the courses that have transferred in the past on our transfer credit course guide at go.rpi.edu slash credit guide. 
we will um, provide you a credit evaluation worksheet. So that will show all of the courses that you took at your previous institutions and how they transfer into Rensselaer. And then we'll also provide you with a degree works completion, uh, completion sheet. That will show all of the courses that are required for the Lally School of Management for you to graduate from whatever degree program in that school you're studying in and how those classes transfer in. So it'll show all of the courses that you got credit for and the classes you have left to take before you can get your degree from Rensselaer. We do have a transfer orientation for students that is required. So um, before you start at Rensselaer, you do need to participate in um, transfer orientation. It is run by our Office of Student Transitions. Um, they, I believe this year, will be running a um, virtual uh, transfer orientation for students. Um, so we'll all be online. When you get admitted, you will be hearing information about how to sign up for that. Um, you'll uh, receive a lot of information through your RPI email once you get all that set up. So you'll definitely be getting a lot of information in that sense um, once you are admitted. A little bit about financial aid, Rensselaer offers both need and merit-based aid. So the need-based aid is based on the FAFSA form and the CSS profile. And then as long as you're a U.S. citizen or permanent resident, you're automatically considered for merit-based aid based on your application. Um, so there's no additional forms, applications, anything that you need to submit. I don't know what just happened to my computer, but I'm going to just press resume slideshow and <laughs> hope I'm back on the right slide now. Um, so as I was saying, as long as you're a U.S. citizen or permanent resident, you're automatically considered for merit-based aid when you apply. So there's no additional forms or applications that you need to submit. Um, everything that's uh, asked in your application, so we'll be looking at your grades, um, your extracurricular activities, um, your essay if you write one, um, all of that will be considered as part of um, something that we consider for your merit-based aid. We do have a few transfer-specific scholarships um, that are affiliated with um, a number of our affiliated schools. So uh, we have um, those affiliated scholarships where it's a minimum of $18,000 uh, per year that you'll get as a transfer student coming into Rensselaer. You do need to be nominated by someone from your previous institution. So um, they need to nominate you uh, as a recipient of this award. Um, and then that will be added, uh, be part of your financial aid package. It won't necessarily be added on top of it, um, but it'll be uh, your merit-based aid that you'll be receiving from Rensselaer. Rensselaer does not stack awards. Um, so you'll get the largest merit award that you're eligible for. Um, Rensselaer also offers the Phi Theta Kappa Scholarship, which is a $5,000 scholarship for students who are a member of Phi Theta Kappa. As Clint was saying, unfortunately, we are close to visitors at this time. Uh, we do have a beautiful campus and we really do wish we could bring you to campus so you could see it and walk around and experience it in person. Right now, um, we do offer students the opportunity to take the virtual tour online, as well as we have sessions where we have our student ambassadors walking through the virtual tours, talking about their experience in some of the different buildings and just kind of uh, uh, you know, explaining their student life perspective uh, as they go through the tour. As I was saying, make sure you connect with us um, on social media. We are extremely active on Instagram. So that's the best way to learn about campus is to follow us on Instagram. I also listed um, the Lally School of Management's handle on there uh, for both Instagram and Facebook. So make sure to follow them as well. Um, our admissions account does a number of different takeovers on a regular basis. Our custom view book is a great way to get the information that you're interested in. So you fill out some information saying I'm interested in this major, these specific clubs and these student organizations, and it creates a view book for you based on what your interest areas are. Uh, we also have done a ton of uh, webinars that have been recorded and posted to YouTube. So um, this one will also be posted there um, eventually. So it, you know, if you want to come back and watch this uh, webinar at a later point, or you want to watch another webinar, maybe one on financial aid or one specifically um, on um, the ARCH program or co-ops and internships, uh, we have them all listed on our YouTube uh, account. 
Um, this is my contact information. My name is Teresa Abbott. Nick Rosado is the Director of Transfer Admissions. You can reach us directly on our email addresses, but you can also reach us at transfer at rpi.edu. We are monitoring that mailbox regularly. Um, and so please feel free to email us with any specific questions. We can connect you to different offices on campus as well. Um, so please feel free to reach out to us um, if you have additional questions. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I am also going to um, uh, stop recording. So you can feel free to broadcast your video. You can feel free to um, unmute yourself, ask any questions that you have about Rensselaer.